How many buttons do you need on a mouse? 10. That's rookie numbers. How about 14? Still not enough. 20 then? How about one mouse that can do all of that, all three different setups? This is the Ryzen Naga V2 Pro. It can have a lot of buttons. Hi guys, I'm Matt and welcome to Kit Guru. This time around, I'm going to be reviewing and checking out the Razer Naga V2 Pro, a versatile gaming mouse that feels like something straight out of a Transformers movie. This is a jack of all trades mouse that can be set up in different configurations by using the three included magnetic side plates to add extra buttons. Along with having a sensor capable of up to 30,000 DPI, 100% pure PTFE feet, multiple connectivity options, a Hyperscroll Pro mouse wheel, and it's compatible with the new Mouse Dock Pro. I did cover that in my Basilisk V3 Pro review, but I will talk about it later in this review as well. Now let's just get this out of the way before we dive into the review. This mouse costs 180 quid. That is insane. Is there anything that this mouse can't do? Let's find out, shall we? The packaging for the Naga V2 Pro is the usual for Razer, albeit a slightly larger box to accommodate those additional magnetic side plates. The instantly recognisable Razer colour scheme and the usual product photo and list of features can be found on the outside of the box. Then on the inside, you'll find the mouse with one of the magnetic plates already installed. In my case, this was the two button variant, which is supposedly to be used for FPS gaming. The other two additional plates, one with six buttons and the other containing 12, are sitting just off to the side of the mouse. There's also a six foot speed flex USB-C to USB-A cable, a USB-A to USB-C converter, the hyperspeed wireless dongle, which can be stashed away underneath the installed side plate, and then finally there's a leaflet with a quick start guide and all the, the usual information. The Naga V2 Pro is a stealthy, sleek looking mouse. The all black design and semi-textured finish give it a classy feel. It does have RGB, with the amount of the customizable zones varying depending on which side plate that you've got installed. If you go for the two or the six button plates, then the only RGB you'll see is on the logo at the rear of the mouse. But if you switch out to the 12 button version, then you'll get RGB backlighting on the side buttons too, which helps highlight the keys as they are quite small on that 12 button side plate. The shape of the Naga Pro V2 is on the chunky side. It's quite a bulbous mouse that fills your hand when you're using it. It'd be well suited to anyone with large hands. The right hand side has a really comfortable and contoured shape that allows your ring finger to sit just in the right place and also angles your hand at a position to the right slightly, making the side buttons easier to reach. Very, very clever design choices from Razer. Unlike the other Razer mice I've reviewed recently, the left and right click on the Naga V2 Pro are molded from the same piece of plastic that covers the entire body. I'll cover how they feel in the build quality section of the video in a couple of minutes. The bottom of the mouse contains a button for switching profiles and a toggle switch for changing the connection method. And then just below that is a circular removable plastic piece that covers the connection slot for the wireless charging puck which is sold separately either on its own or as part of the Mouse Dock Pro, which I've got on the desk with me now. The feet on the Naga V2 Pro are made from pure PTFE and feel really smooth. The Naga glides quite nicely for such a chunky and heavy mouse. And speaking of weight, the Naga V2 Pro weighs in at 134 grams without the cable or the dongle and a couple of grams heavier if you choose to add the charging puck that I mentioned a second ago. It's definitely a chunky mouse and it feels reassuringly sturdy when you use it. The build quality on the Naga V2 Pro is great. All of the buttons feel very robust and that's including the buttons on the magnetic side panels. I expected a bit of play in the removable section and it is there but it's very, very minimal. Once the panel is connected to the mouse, it feels firm and it doesn't rattle or move any noticeable amount when you're gaming. 
The buttons all feel nice and tactile and have a satisfying click when you press them. The scroll wheel on the Naga V2 Pro is absolutely insane. It's by far the best scroll wheel I've ever used. It's completely customizable. Within Razer's Synapse software, there are several preset scroll wheel modes, or you can select the custom profile, and then you get to change how many steps it has, ranging from eight all the way up to 96. And then you can also change the tension of the wheel itself on a scale of zero to 100. This translates in reality to a scroll wheel that can be set up to feel exactly how you want it to. What's more, the mouse can automatically detect when you have a browser open and then switch the wheel to the smooth scroll option, perfect for endlessly scrolling through social media. The bottom line is the scroll wheel customization and the scroll wheel in general on the Naga V2 Pro blew me away. If you don't like how the wheel feels, then just change it, find your perfect settings. Here's a sound test of all the buttons, including the different side panels and the different scroll wheel settings. Now let's talk about the sensor in the Naga V2 Pro. The mouse features the same sensor as found in the Death Adder V3 Pro and the Basilisk V3 Pro, which is Razer's own Focus Pro 30K optical sensor. Now back in my review of the Death Adder V3 Pro, I praised the sensor for feeling fast and fluid, and that's no different at all on this mouse. The polling rate caps out at 1000 Hz when using the included USB dongle, which is pretty standard for gaming mice, although we are seeing an increased amount of mice release with higher rates of 2 and 4000 Hz. But as I mentioned, 1000 Hz is the limit here, which does help keep the battery life nice and lengthy, but I'll talk more about that in a little bit. The Focus Pro optical sensor sports specs like a max IPS rating of 750 and maximum acceleration of 70 Gs, adding up to mean that the Naga V2 Pro will keep up with the fastest of movements. The mouse feels great to use. From a latency perspective, it's smooth and consistent. Now, Razer have launched the Mouse Dock Pro recently, and this mouse does work with it, although there's no 4000 Hz polling supported, which was a bit disappointing. It allows you to connect to the Naga V2 Pro with a 1000 Hz polling rate though, which is the same as the dongle that you get in the box. The dock is very nice for conveniently charging the mouse. It's a small magnetic mount that sits on your desk. It sticks to the mouse through the use of the wireless charging puck, which replaces the circular plastic section on the bottom of the Naga V2 Pro. Then it's just a case of sticking the mouse on the dock when you're not using it and it'll wirelessly charge. It's really, really useful and convenient in my opinion. And the dock has customizable RGB, which will sync with all of your other Razer products that you've got. The Mouse Dock Pro, which includes the wireless charging puck, costs £80 from Razer's website, and you can buy the wireless charging puck separately to use with any Qi wireless charger, and that'll set you back 20 quid. So I touched on the charging a little bit there, but the big question is how often does it need to be charged? Razer claim that the Naga V2 Pro is capable of up to a whopping 150 hours when using hyperspeed wireless and up to 300 hours when using Bluetooth, the highest out of all the Razer mice that I've reviewed for KitGuru so far. And I'd love to give you an exact figure, but I haven't been able to drain this mouse yet. 
It's like an Energizer bunny. It just keeps going and going. I've charged it once and it's just still going strong. Coupling that with having the mouse dock pro on my desk means that the battery life hardly ever enters my mind with this mouse. The battery is absolutely solid. As for connectivity, there are three options for connecting the mouse to your PC. Razer's Hyperspeed Wireless, which performs excellently and has never caused me any issues with any of the Razer products that I've ever reviewed. Then there's Bluetooth, which does work, but as always, I'd only ever use it if I had to, and I certainly wouldn't use it for gaming. Then there's the good old cable if you want to play and charge at the same time. If you choose to pick up the Mouse Dock Pro, then you can use that as an alternative to the included dongle. Now my gaming experience with the Naga V2 Pro has been a bit strange if I'm honest. This mouse feels like a jack of all trades, but unfortunately it's, it's not really a master of any of them. The experience hinges on which of those magnetic side panels you've got installed. The two button panel, which is designed for FPS gaming, is pretty decent, but I felt the mouse is a tad too heavy compared to the Death Adder, for example, when using it with two buttons. The six button side panel is meant to be used in Battle Royale and MOBA games, according to Razer's website, that is. And to be honest, I don't play that type of game very much, but that setup on the mouse is my favorite sort of configuration. The buttons are pronounced well enough to be able to get to them easily without your thumb getting lost on the side. And then there's the 12 button side panel, which might be nice for someone with smaller hands than me, but if I'm honest, I just find it confusing to accurately press the button that I want to. It's designed to be used when playing MMOs, and I dived into some new world to test it out and it felt very strange. But we have to bear in mind that I'm used to playing MMOs with mostly keyboard shortcuts and 15 year old habits tend to dive quite hard. In general, the mouse performs okay in all setups, but I can't help but feel that a mouse that is designed solely for use of FPS games or solely for use of MOBA games will outperform the Naga V2 Pro that's trying to cater to everyone's needs. That's certainly the way I felt when playing FPS games with it. I'd rather have been using the Death Adder V3 Pro, if I'm honest. Customizing the mouse is pretty simple and it's done using Razer's Synapse software. There are options for setting different mappings for the many different buttons available in the Customize tab. Performance is where you're able to change the DPI stages and the polling rate. Once you've set up your preferred DPI stages, you can then cycle between them with one of the buttons sitting just behind the scroll wheel. This is much better than placing the button on the bottom like sun, sun mice. I know some manufacturers do so you don't accidentally knock it, but I like to be able to reach it if I want to. The scrolling tab is the place to go to configure the scroll wheel. There are five presets and a custom profile, and again, you can cycle through them with the button just behind the scroll wheel itself. And I just wanna reiterate, this scroll wheel is the best I've ever used. The customization is crazy. Lighting is as it says on the tin, much like all of the other Razer products they've reviewed, you can customize the lighting and you can sync it across all of the chroma enabled Razer devices that you've got connected to your PC. There are some preset options, but you can install Chroma Studio and go crazy with the creativity if you want to. The calibration tab allows you to change the liftoff and landing sensor distances, allowing you to customize it to match your usage style and your mouse pad. Then finally, the power tab has some useful features that will help you prolong the battery life by activating power saving and low power modes. Overall, Synapse is decent, and the more I use it, the more that I feel that way. It's better than a lot of peripheral softwares out there, but it can sometimes feel a bit clunky or be a bit slow to open. There have been reports of it slowing down systems online, but I personally haven't had any issues with it. Synapse gets the job done and is okay. I've used better software, but I've also used far, far worse. So my final thoughts on the Naga V2 Pro are a bit mixed. It's a great all-rounder mouse that's versatile. It's got really good battery life and will suit anyone's needs pretty well. The scroll wheel is absolutely amazing. It's honestly the best I've ever used. The customization and the feel are top notch and no other wheel is ever going to be good enough after using this mouse. But I really feel that this mouse is, as I said earlier, a jack of all trades and a master of none. I get the angle that Razer were coming at this from, but a mouse that is designed for a specific genre and not every genre would suit my needs better. And it's expensive. 
properly expensive, 180 quid for a mouse. That's, I've, I'm lost for words. I guess if you're a big fan of Razer and you want a mouse that is as versatile as anything I've ever seen, then this mouse ticks all of the boxes and you may want to check it out. It's solid and it does everything. You just have to stomach that price. And that's the end of the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like down below if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to KitGuru to keep up with the latest PC gaming news and reviews. There will be links in the video description to our Discord server, our Patreon page, and our merch store if you want to check any of that out. Anyway, guys, this has been the Mouse Dock Pro and the Naga V2 Pro, both from Razer. I will speak to you in the next one. Look after yourselves. See you later.